Hello and welcome to your daily dose of commentary. Today we start with the topic, is Aiden Ross's collab with Donald Trump good for streamers? Do I even want to talk about this? It is just so dumb. Did you guys hear about how that dipshit Aiden Ross on Kick had a live stream with Trump? The best picture that came out for me was, was this. So XQC was there as well, and he was wearing a picture of, of Trump on his shirt with grills. Like the, you know, the gold or diamonds or whatever you put in your teeth. And every picture I saw of these two was so impressively awkward and weird. Where's that Home Alone picture? Showing the picture of these two. It's like, do you guys feel old yet? This is them now. <laughs> like, it, it does work. If you knew nothing about this, you would believe this to be true. I mean, XQC looks weirdly happy, honestly, to be shaking Trump's hand, but whatever. Like, as much as I don't like toxic American politics and shit, is this good for streamers? I suppose we've already had high-profile live stream interactions with politics, like that long, long time ago where AOC did Among Us with some streamers. I think we've had other things like that happen, but this is probably the biggest involvement between mainstream politics and streaming. It was between, like, certainly the most toxic politician with the most toxic live streamer on the most toxic platform. So I don't think this is good for live streaming as a whole. Traditionally, live streaming becoming more mainstream and accepted is seen as a good thing. But in this particular context, I don't think it was good. <laughs> I think they had 500,000 viewers uh, on, on Kick for the stream. AOC's stream had 400,000 viewers. It was a few years ago, though. It does go to show how mainstream celebrities still can massively dwarf our online celebrities, right? In the same way, what was the Drake with uh, Ninja so many years ago? How many viewers did that have? But then again, I mean, there are other streamers who've gotten like millions of viewers. Who's the that Spanish guy who always breaking records? Mr. Beast. Yes, Mr. Beast is Spanish. Is it buy or whatever his name is? Or eBuy. He gets millions of viewers when he does particular events and stuff. What I'm trying to say is, chat, where are my millions of viewers, okay? I just need to be more toxic. Twitch's new app is garbage. So a hot new thing has released in the world of live streaming chat. So this will affect like none of you. I'll still talk about it. So as you guys know, I have been multi-streaming for a while to Twitch and YouTube at the same time. I did TikTok for a bit, might do it again at some other point, but I'm doing just Twitch and YouTube right now. The thing I was using was multi-RTMP outputs plugin, which was from 2020. So I don't think it's been updated in quite a long time, but it worked quite well. Like you can see over here, 1.6 million downloads. For a plugin, especially one that's this old, that's a lot. But very recently, the most recent version of OBS broke this plugin. Fortunately, Atium has released their own version for OBS Studio 30 Plus, which is where the other one's broken. And it works the exact same way as the plugin did, as far as I'm aware. I've had absolutely no issues with it, and it's just, I mean, you can watch the guys and stuff, but if you're looking to multi-stream, this is the new way that people multi-stream. It also has integrated stuff for you, how you can stream in 16 by nine and nine by 16, that being vertical and horizontal. I have not built myself my vertical stream yet, and I'll experiment with it, but the problem with streaming in a vertical format is it's just worse than a 16x9. While I haven't experimented with it on TikTok, apparently it has a thing where you can have a vertical version of your stream, and then when people turn their phone, it goes to the 16x9, but YouTube doesn't have that yet. And there has been some rumors that Twitch is going to be allowing vertical streams as well. Whether that will be you stream one version of OBS, which has a vertical version of your stream that you can set up different sources for and stuff, or if it will just be like a, a smaller 16 by nine in the vertical format, I, I don't know. But long story short, Twitch has clearly recognized that a lot of people like using their phones in vertical, and it's trying to catch up and make its own version of that. There has been a recent change to the Twitch app that made everyone mad, and a part of it was things being a lot more vertical. So for the 10 people interested, that's kind of where streaming is going right now, and that's how you multi-stream. It's awful. Yeah, I heard a bunch of people complaining about it on Twitter. I don't use the app, so. Have I seen the UI myself? I saw bits of it on Twitter. What the flying ape shit is this Twitch mobile app, man? The live UI shows channels you don't follow as the main channel, and you have to click on a separate follow tab to see who's live. Nice, man. Who cooked this mobile UI update for Twitch? Revert this, please. And so, yeah, it's uh, vertical, 
but everyone's streams are still set the horizontal. So it just takes up a small part of the, the, the screen. Surely what you're meant to do is swipe to something and then turn it. And so it will show it in 16 by nine. It's interesting though that swiping is showing all these low view streams. But this is the thing, like so many people watch shorts and use TikTok and stuff on, on 9x16 and Twitch wants something that can get them in that space as well. It's why they were doing the, the clips feed for a while in 16x9 mobile only. This is Twitch's official announcement. Find something to watch faster with a new Twitch mobile app rolling out to everyone this week. Learn more about the changes we made so far and what's coming next. Oh, it has, the, so it has the clips tab too. It's music though. The problem is it just seems to be the worst of all worlds, where if you make content specifically for nine by 16, it can look good. If you try to convert 16 by nine content, like with manual control to nine by 16, it can look decent. If you just try and force all 16 by nine content into nine by 16, it looks garbage. And you have so much empty real estate. Like I have certainly watched videos that small on my phone, but usually not by choice or just temporarily. Like I wouldn't want an entire platform based around it being that size. It didn't even show that you could turn your phone and have it go back to normal size. Surely that's a thing. It is NOS? Oh, then this is the worst thing that's ever been made in the history of mankind. That's just dumb. Because even TikTok has that. Like why would they make this? That's insane. Until you click into the stream. Oh, so what you click into it, then it like opens the stream itself and then you can turn. That's also still dumb. So TikTok is the lowest standard, nice. TikTok won the nine by 16 game and they've been doing it longer than everyone else. Generally speaking, TikTok has the better user experience than these other platforms who are playing catch up. They want to get the people with shit attention spans, but that's the thing. Live streaming isn't for people with shit attention spans. You got to be willing to lock in for a considerable amount of time. It's in part why live streaming on TikTok and even YouTube to some degree aren't as likely to build up watch time. The average viewer on Twitch spends more time in stream than the average viewer on YouTube or TikTok. Buy the new Woofle plushie before it's gone. It will probably only have like three days left when you hear this. So good news everyone. I'm currently selling a plushie till like the 23rd or 24th, depending upon where you are in the world of August. It is my second plushie that I've done. The first one sold a couple of hundred. This one has already sold like 360. I'm pretty sure I outselling the first one, which is surprising because when I did the previous one, I think I was more popular, but regardless, it's very cute and fluffy. In the same way that my last plushie was exclusive to that period, if you don't buy this one, in the time that it's available, it'll never come again. I will probably make other plushies in the future, but if you want this particular one, this particular design, it is unfortunately only available for a short period. As I say here, my new Wooful plushie is here, inspired by the Viper Love emos and crafted with soft, high quality materials, perfect for snuggling during the streams or displaying proudly as part of your merchandise collection. So he sold 367. And there's a cute little guy like this. You got a very fluffy tail. But yeah, I'm excited for it. I like it. And yeah, I hope it continues to sell a lot and people like it. What was interesting about this is I did this plushie with Makeship. The first one I've done with them and it's been surprising to see that they've been advertising my plushie. So this is on Instagram, I think. This is on, where the fuck is this? Is this Instagram too? Or is this Facebook? But like even on Twitter, I think they tagged me in it and they're like, what's the mood today? Saying I'm a strong seven and eight. So they're these two moods and I'm in, I'm in the middle. I'm a five. Not many people wrote five though. Five, eight, yeah. Beep, beep, boop. Good on ya. This person mags, the strong five, good job. What I'm saying is, I wonder how many sales that this advertising has actually gotten. Whatever the case is, I appreciate it. Because the last place I did it with, didn't do shit. Oh, oh, here's, here's well saying. Found your plushie advertised on Makeshift's Facebook ads. 
to get targeted advertising on makeshift on other platforms, plus the Wufu plushie is expected after browsing the site, but the top featured plushie seems to be ones that reach their fun goal. So for people who are getting makeshift ads after generally browsing anything plushie related, might see Wufu in that list of featured plushies. That was a mouthful, but seemingly because I sold enough to hit the threshold I need for them to actually be made, now they're being shown to other people on other platforms, which is cool. The one risk with making plushies about my emotes is that, you know, the vast majority of my audience is on YouTube and doesn't necessarily know much about my emotes, even though they do feature in my content sometimes. The emotes are more of a Twitch thing. So maybe I'll see how the next one goes when it's just about me or whatever. Dark Viper EU Clips returns. It is now time for the biggest news of the century. My Clips channel is back. But uh, I deleted or privated every clip that was on the channel. I changed it from Dark Viper EU Extras, which is what it was before, changing it back to Dark Viper EU Clips. And now it's uploading two clips a day. These clips will just be, for the time being, my facts and glitches and my best clips that I've made into shorts. So if you watch my shorts, maybe not a particular interest. The main reason I was doing this though is because of what I talked about in my previous rambles where there are a bunch of channels who just recreate my shorts, my facts and glitches, my clips, and then put them on their YouTube channels with some clickbaity title and they do quite well. Or at the very least, like they have the occasional one pop off. It has been six days and I have not had one pop off yet, but I hope that eventually happens. I'm not super confident it's going to lead to anything of importance, but it doesn't take much effort to get a handful of people to run this for me. It's probably going to run at a loss forever, but uh, that's fine. Although, like, if it doesn't go anywhere in, I don't know, six months or something, then maybe I'll cancel it. But for the time being, this is what I'm doing. And we'll see how it goes. Do you think shorts have been a net gain for YouTubers? It is so hard to tell. <laughs> Can you make money on shorts? Yeah. You get, like, 11 cents per thousand views. Clips can have mid rolls, so make more money. So I'd rather the clips channel be successful than shorts be successful. But that's not how the algorithm is situated right now. I made $5,000 in the last 28 days from shorts from 40 million views. And how much do I make? You mean after I pay the editors? Okay, I give most of that to the editors, but I do make something. I rejected this editor for being too good. So obviously I trial quite a lot of people for editing roles, well, a variety of different roles in my tiny little enterprise here. I don't have that high standards for who I trial. It's more like people just ask, hey, can I trial? And I'm like, yeah, sure, here's some footage. I've had people who have proclaimed like a decade of experience that have sucked dick. I've had people who have said they're not very good, that have been amazing. The trials I set, at least certainly these days, are very simple and don't take that much time. But nevertheless, because I trial so many people, I have a few standard responses that I give to people when what they give me isn't sufficient. However, because I answer like, I don't know, like 100 messages every day, I'm usually answering messages pretty fast, and sometimes I mistype things. And so this person I rejected, Nen Sija, on Twitter, took a picture of my response. They said, tried to get a job, I was too good for him. Obviously, he had no other choice. And so what I said to him was, Unfortunately, I think your work is exactly what I am looking for. Thanks for reaching out regardless. <laughs> to this I said, lol, I think this was the second or third time I've done that. Yep, your work was too good sadly. I wish you all the best in your future editing. <laughs> all good mate, all good. He, re he responded. Getting mixed signals here. <laughs> Some people did seem confused. Like people legitimately asked, how can a person be so good at editing that you reject them? I was joking. I simply mistyped. It should have said, unfortunately, I think your work is not exactly what I'm looking for. But yeah, funny interaction. I had a somewhat embarrassing moment with a fan. So very recently, I asked Aitana if I could go through her phone to get like pictures that she did of the events that we were that we did together that I don't necessarily have. And I ended up seeing that she had a handful of pictures that she took like stealthily of me that she didn't want me to see. Like random ones like this. Just me on the phone. And so I put it on Instagram and I said, caption this. And the responses were, hello, is this the number for Lester Crest? Sir, a second blimp has hit Maze Bank. What do you mean I'm in witness protection? I wasn't convicted of anything. Hey, Matto, it's Roman. Let's go bowling. Hello, this is Agatha again. So yeah, some pretty good ones. As you guys know, hopefully, I probably mentioned it somewhere. I've recently decided to have other people take my pictures and stuff that me and Aitana make when we go places and put them on Instagram. 
just so I don't have to spend the time doing it myself so I can spend time editing and stuff because I find myself falling behind in other more important things. Instagram does not make an, 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 any money and I don't even know if it really gets me any new viewers and stuff. So I can't be spending the time I was spending before posting this stuff unless I have to. So I'm trialing right now having well posted stuff. And this was the first one he posted. I of course still type my whole dad posts, people call it here. Checked out Candlelight Concerts. I was told they'd be playing songs from the band Coldplay, but using just the string quartet, which is violin, viola, and cello. If you asked me to name a single Coldplay song, I'd fail, but I still easily knew half the songs when I heard them on the nice. Their songs are just that popular. Their rendition sounded really good with a wonderful atmosphere. It was nice to support musicians and have a nice romantic time with Aitana. On my way out while waiting for Aitana, I knocked over three fake candles that were on the floor with my foot as I moved to lean against the wall. I sheepishly moved them back, and when I stood up, the guy who was on the wall next to me looks at me and says, Dark Viper EU? I didn't exactly make a charming first impression, I think. Seemed like a nice bloke, and I happened to catch the picture he put of us for his story on Instagram. So there's a picture of us. It had to be fixed with AI, because it turns out we didn't take that many pictures, and this picture was blurry, and so this is like an unblurred version of us. I think it looks as it, the original photo did just less blurred, but... See everyone with their photos, uh, see everyone with their uh, phones here? This is because they said don't take any video uh, until like the very end. So they did like two songs where you could take video and the rest you couldn't. That's why everyone had phones out. It sounded really nice. Like I don't know if it's really communicated over the quality of a microphone on a phone, but on the day it was just like captivating. And this, this dude was very charming in his um, introductions and stuff. It was at the Mass Sonic Center. I can read. Anyway, cool idea. These are fake candles, by the way, not real candles, because if they were real candles, one would get knocked over and they'd burn the entire place down. But they look pretty real. Like, you have to examine them and go, oh yeah, of, of course, they can't be real. Especially these people in the middle here would be like, so hot the entire time. It was a very good atmosphere though. And this was the dude who I met. His post originally said like, the goat Dark Vapor EU, which I found flattering. Especially considering the awkwardness under which uh, I met him. But uh, that was cool stuff. I've also been experimenting with uh, having my stuff cross-posted to Twitter. Twitter more about yapping than it is about, you know, pictures and videos and stuff. But I asked everyone if they wanted me to cross-post stuff and people said they did. As I said here, this platform is more for yapping than anything else, but I figured I'd ask anyway. I go on adventures around Sydney with Aitana each week and I take pictures and videos for Instagram. Do you want me to post that content here as well? As many of you don't use Instagram. 72% said yes, post it here. 28% said no, just have it on Insta. The problem with this is that even if people, in theory, want to see it, it doesn't mean that enough people do that Twitter's algorithm will take notice of it, or that it won't get suppressed in some way. So this candlelight concert one got, you know, 1.1k likes, 20,000 views. That's way less than what it got on Instagram, right? It got 6,000 likes here, which is actually fairly low for Instagram. But future ones have been posted, so the Sydney Vivid Light Show, like previous events that I've gone to, us making pasta, us eating food and seeing Inside Out 2, going glamping at the winery in Surrey Hills, all this stuff's been on Instagram. This most recent one though did the worst out of all of them, whether that was because it was just a fairly simple post or because it said, go check out my Instagram, it's hard to say. Because as I've said before, Twitter does not like it when you promote other, in, uh, other social medias on Twitter. And so it will nuke posts that it believes are, are sending people elsewhere. Whether that's it can detect the advertisement or it can detect people leaving the platform. I can't say, it's probably both. But I've begun to second guess my posting of this stuff to Twitter. Maybe I will just keep it on Instagram. I don't know. Personal stuff on Twitter, not a good idea. I've always posted personal stuff on Twitter though. It's just I haven't done this sort of personal stuff in my life before. So we'll see if I continue that. Everything's being tested. Stop. Now that I have your attention, hit the like and subscribe button. 
Thank you. I wish you all the best.